Good morning, men and women of Christ. Back with you with part two of this spirit-led teaching, the deception of being materially attractive. The deception of being materially attractive, of being seen from the perspective of what we wear, what we drive, where we live, our bank account, our status in the world. Okay. Uh, the deception of being seen from a, a, a place of being materially attractive is when people are drawn to you. They're, they're, they're drawn to you because of what you have by sight in the flesh, but they have agendas in their spirit that if you are not alive in faith, you can't discern the agenda in their spirit and you can fall into this into the deception of thinking people like that actually care about you as a person when they're only into what they can get out of you as a person. And when you're dealing with people like that, a lot of these people have dangerous agendas. So we all have to be alive in faith. We should be alive in faith, which is salvation, to be able to see beyond the flesh by faith and not just limited to the flesh by sight. This is why we walk by faith, not by sight. Anything outside of that is dangerous because always remember that there's more to a person than what you naturally see. We, we are not natural beings. We are natural beings, but we were created for spiritual beings. In everybody you encounter naturally as male or female, there is a fallen spiritual man or woman within that individual who is the real person that you're dealing with. And oftentimes, when we're caught up in the flesh and we don't have eyes to see beyond, beyond the flesh because our spiritual eyes are closed because we're not in Christ, we're in dangerous situations. We think we're in relationships when they are nothing more than arrangement ships. And when the arrangement and condition in which we meet people falls apart, guess what happened? The so-called relationship falls apart. Because it never was a relationship. It was only an arrangement ship. So, uh, to know the difference between someone being truly attracted to you as a person, which is, which is original, as an original person, which is spiritual, or someone only attracted to you because of what you possess as a person, which is unoriginal, We need to know how to discern the difference. And to discern the difference, we have to be in Christ. To be able to discern the flesh from the spirit, whether someone is attracted to us by sight or they're connected to us by faith. All right. Let us go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19. And I'll stress this again. It is better to be rich than to look rich. It is better to be healthy than to look healthy. It is better to be attractive than to look attractive. People go in debt trying to look attractive, trying to look materially attractive. Okay. Let us go to, uh, once again, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 19. 14 through 19. 14 says, for the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. We're dead to trying to look the part. We're dead to the flesh and we're alive unto God in the spirit. So we're no longer trying to look like something we're not. We're actually becoming, we're actually on the verge of becoming what we were working so hard just to look like. If one died for all, then we're all dead. 15, and that he died for all, that they which that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. That's pertaining to the flesh. But unto him which died and rose for them again. That's pertaining to the eternal spirit. You're back in your original position, which is Christ. This is where rest, the work of restoration has to begin to take place. Because once you're back in Christ and through the work of his restoration, he restores you back to his image because the image of Christ is the image of God. Then through that image, 
in the spirit, he comes to the soul and the body by the fruit of the spirit. Now you have an uncorruptible attraction. You have that drawing power, power where people are drawn to you. They're drawn to you beyond what, they're see, what they see, not because of what they see. Because even physical uh, attraction, someone attracted to you based on the way you look, because you look attractive. There's nothing wrong with looking attractive. There's nothing wrong with being handsome as a man or beautiful as a, or being handsome as a male or beautiful as a female. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you understand that that is not true attraction. That no one can love you based on your looks. They can lust for you based on your looks and your body, but they can't love you based on your looks and your body. And what happens in lust? When lust conceives, it brings forth sin. James 1.15, sin when it is finished is going to bring forth death. Because it was not true attraction. It was just sensual attraction. Sixteen. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Don't know anybody from a perspective of sight. I don't care what they possess. Possessions don't make you blessed. The world got possessions and the whole world lies in wickedness. So uh, the amount of possessions and the money someone's possess does not determine their walk with God. Remember that there's the God of this present world system. This is the false God of the world, the, the, the false antichrist, antichrist, which makes you think you're blessed because of what you have. And the true God through Christ, which is not of this world, because he is not the God of corruption, which is not of this world. He brings us to the revelation we're blessed because of who we are in Christ. We're in Ephesians 1.3, the heavenly places. Anything outside of the heavenly places, you're in the world. You're blessed because of what you have. In the world is corruption. Not just because it's corruption doesn't mean it's evil. Money in everything you can buy. The flesh, what you see on live, the flesh, money, and everything you can buy is corruptible. But that doesn't make it evil because it's corruptible. corruptible. Corruptible simply means it was temporary. It's temporary. Just because your flesh is temporary, does that mean you abandon your flesh and don't take care of your flesh? Uh, of course not. It just means it's temporary. That's what corruption means. It, it, it doesn't last forever. So, wherefore do we know man after the flesh? Yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh. That's the doing according to Jesus. Know we him no more. Know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Any man or woman in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. That old things are passed away of, of looking attractive as opposed to being attractive, of looking rich as opposed to being rich, looking healthy as opposed to being healthy. Okay, looking sexy as opposed to being sexy, and that's important because you can't have a divine mate, uh, uh, husband or wife without the ability to have intimacy with them. Because the foundation that God lays for the eternal man and woman is uh, it's a sexual foundation. It's for the, the wife and the husband to be able to connect sexually which is a different intimacy from the intimacy of a brother and a sister in Christ. Because sexual love is, is where you're in love with one another. You know, loving someone and being in love with someone are two different things. They're not the same. They're not the same. Um, let us go on. The former things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. All things have become new, brand new, because you're now back in your original state of being, as opposed to being outside of being original, and uh, you're just looking, just, just looking the part. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself 
through Christ. Through Christ, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Of reconciliation back to one another? No, reconciliation back to him through Christ. When, when, when Christ, when Jesus in the written word said, I am the door and no, no one can come to the Father but through me. When he said that in the flesh and he said I, he was speaking as first person in his original state as the Christ in the spirit who is the image of God. So the image of God is the doorway to God. Now anything outside of the image can't make its way. It can't get through. It can't get through. Once you're in Christ, you have to be restored back to the image of Christ so that Christ can now come through you. But before he can come through you, you have to first be in him. So you're in him through being born of the Spirit. Then through restoration back to his image, he comes to, to your soul and body, to your flesh in the world by the fruit of the Spirit. Now light has manifested into this fallen world of religious darkness. You are original in a world of unoriginality. You operate in a knowledge that the world cannot relate to. They can see it, but can't relate to it. Because you're uncommon amongst a world that is now common. Just common. All right. Let us go to 1 Peter 23 through 25 as we come to a close. 1 Peter 23 to 25. First Peter 1, 23 to 25. One. Um, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, being born again. See, we have to be born again. Before Christ can come through you, you have to be in him. You have to be born again. Being born again, not of uncorrupt, not of corruptible seed, because the flesh is corruptible, but of incorruptible, because when you're born again, you're back in the first heaven. Which, which is Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you're back in the, in the first heaven in the mind of your spirit. The, uh, the, un, the, the corruptible seed is when we're born in the flesh, but we're under. Second heaven in the spirit, the second heaven in the spirit, which is where Satan is, the false Christ, who is over the, the, the financial system of the world. So being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God, that's the eternal word, which liveth and abides forever. That's the saving word. That's the written word, which is the Bible. And there's the eternal word which is Christ. The written word was given to the mind of the flesh. The mind of our spirit was created by the eternal word. This is what we fell from. And this is where our spirit has to be born back into. Which lives and abides forever. For all flesh, this is when we look the part, when we want to look attractive, when we want to look healthy, when we want to look rich, without being attractive, without being healthy, without being, without being rich. Watch the end result. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. That's mankind, as the flesh. The grass withered, and the flower thereof falls away. But the word of the Lord, that's the living word, endureth forever. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto us. This is the word by which the gospel is preached unto us, 
the unending word of God. The written word has a beginning and it has an end. The living word, which is Christ, never had a beginning. It never had an end. The living word never had a beginning. It never has an end. So it's, it's telling us the end result of all flesh and pursuing the things that make us uh, naturally attractive in the flesh. There's nothing wrong with, with, with wanting to have abundance, uh, material abundance and financial abundance. There's nothing wrong with that. But through the gospel, we have the ability to secure these things. Outside of the gospel, we try to find security in these things. So we have to be careful. We have to be very careful. So the deception of material attraction is very dangerous. And we have to know the difference between people being attracted to you because of what you have as a person or being attracted to you because of you as a person. They're two separate things. And that brings us to a conclusion of part two of this teaching. Love you in Christ. We'll see you in part three.